Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and And also on our website. And also on our website. And (laughs) you can also join us in our community group, uh, which is just a daily Bible podcast. And it's over there on Facebook. So please go there because the community is growing and the community is exciting. And the community is always sharing more and more things as to what they see, what they don't see. I mean, you guys are great. We love you. So today we are continuing on in Proverbs. We're reading the rest of Proverbs 22, so verse 17 through 29, and then Proverbs 23 and Proverbs 24. And our reading today has been named 30 Sayings of the Wise, because that is what Solomon Mm -hmm. wrote. And I have written 30 sayings of the wise for you, filled with advice and knowledge. That's from Solomon. So he's saying, listen, learn, and lean. That's Solomon's advice for applying the 30 sayings of the wise to our lives. Listen, learn, and lean. He's also saying, listen to the sayings by opening our hearts. That's in verse 17 learn these 30 wise words so that we can recall and speak them when conflict arises. That's verses 17 and 18. Lean on God, not ourselves or the saints. That's verse 19. And if we listen, learn, and lean on God, then we will have knowledge, good advice, truth, and answers for our challenges, moving us through life's conflict toward a community. So as we spend time in these words, so as we spend time in Solomon's words, here's um, some helpful things to think about. These are life's seven C's. So we are seeing in these 30 sayings, we're talking about our finances. He's talking about friends and faith, failure and family, fools and future. So those are all the F words, you know, it's like a a good sermon. It's a good good F word though, right? It's a good alliteration of F words. Right, right. So finances, friends, faith, failure, family, fools, and future. And these were all, uh, I dug in a little bit and did some research. And this research is is taken from the restorationroad.com website. And they say, first, he starts talking about our finances. We are called by God to wisely steward our capital Mm -hmm. resources. And the 30 sayings of wise surfaces five pearls to help us navigate through life's financial conflict. And left unchecked, this handful of gems can become a quintuplet of anchors that will drown Mm. us in the sea of debt. And we see that, we see that occurrence throughout these 30 sayings just a few times. Saying one is basically the poverty police. Then we have saying three. So I'm not going to go like from in order one, two, and three, because we're just camping out in finances right, right, right now. So saying one is poverty police. Saying three is the borrow barrier. Saying four is sanctified survey. Saying seven is riches to rags. Saying 10 is lawful landmarks. And as you walk through this passage, you're going to see all of mm-hmm. those not in order, but it's all going to make sense. So then he marches on to friends. It's been said that the most influential people in our lives are our friends. Perhaps that's why the 30 sayings of the wise includes a description of four friends that we should avoid making. The hot-tempered, the slothful, the troublemaker, and the rebellious. And saying two is anger danger. Saying 15 is slothful man. Saying 19 is bad company. Saying 30 is resist rebels. Then let's go on to faith. Wisdom applies our faith to our circumstances, literally sticking God's character to our challenges. And the 30 sayings of wise combines God's heart with street smarts, addressing Mm. our work ethic, our self-control, our speech, our motives, and, and as we connect our virtual commitment with our horizontal 
conflict. So think through this with me. Saying five of these 30 wise sayings is hard work helps. Saying six is bribe tribe. Saying 13 is common sense counts. Saying 25 is warn the unwary. Am I saying that right? Warn unwary. The unwary. Very there good. Go. Thank you. Okay, so next we march on to failure. Failure might not be final, but ignored. But if it's ignored, it can be fatal. So the 30 sayings of the wise describes four pitfalls that can kill our lies, sexual misconduct, addiction, and distress. So saying 18 is chameleon complex. Saying saying 17 is wayward women. Saying 18 is the drunken doo-doo. Say, or is it dodo? Is it drunken, dodo? I think it's probably dodo. Drunken dodo. dodo. Like, like a, maybe a, like a dodo? Uh, yeah. A dodo bird or a doo-doo? A dodo and a doo-doo dodo. are basically the same thing. So, and then saying 22 is the pressure pusher. Um, and then marching on into the, the 30 sayings of the wise, we have family. And family is the ultimate picture of God's love. And the Apostle Paul teaches that family derives its name from the Father. In the 30 sayings of the wise, Solomon offers four pillars to construct a firm foundation. For God honoring, we have a loving home. And in that loving home, we have a learning disciplining our children, honoring our parent and uh, honoring our parents and building connections. So saying, saying 11 is receiving the reproof, receiving the correction, Mm -hmm. saying 12 is disciple discipline. So disciple as you're disciplining your children, like Mm -hmm. teach them saying 16 is those secret agents that live in the home. And then saying 20 is the house of leadership. And then finally, we march into, well, not finally, but we march into the fools. And it's the antithesis of the wise person is the fool. And the 30 sayings of the wise include five concepts that both prepare us for dealing with a fool and help us not to become one. And they include reasoning with a fool, instructing a fool, scheming, stealing, and gloating. So saying nine is wisdom wasted. Saying 22 is rebel rascals. Saying 23 is slippery schemer. Saying 27 is bounce back. And saying 28 is weep over others' woes. And then we have the future. So finally, we have the last F in that line of Fs is Mm -hmm. future. Everybody desires hope, a confident assurance regarding the future. And that hope comes exclusively from God. And the 30 sayings of the wise offers four practical ways for us to experience God's hope on this side of heaven. And he's saying, don't envy the simple people. Seek wise counsel, get wisdom, fuel for the soul. So get the wisdom because that is Mm -hmm. the fuel for your soul and don't worry about the wicked. And that's a really hard thing to do because it is so easy to look out across the the horizon and go, what is everybody else doing? And God's saying, don't worry about the wicked. And Solomon in all his wisdom is saying, don't worry about them either. Because in saying 14, it is the envy evil error, which again is don't look at the wicked because they're not going to prosper in the end. Saying 21 is wise words win wars. And we have seen that over and over again in, in Proverbs. Saying 26 is sweet success and saying 29 is wicked worry. I man, someone put a lot of work to figure out all of this and to organize the categories. That is so good. And what I really see in this is that it's you know so many times we're thinking about what everyone else is doing. I like how you said like let's not uh, worry about the wicked because we we are always pointing out the faults of others. And so it's so easy when we're looking at these things. Well, she's not doing this and he's not doing that, and they need to be doing this. But all these things apply to ourselves. So, you know, we need to watch for, we need to manage our finances. We need to take care of our Mm -hmm. friends and not, um, you know, hang out with people we shouldn't. We need to deal with failure. All of us sometime in our lives are going to have some types of failure. We need to disciple and train our children and raise our families to love God. We need to deal with fools. All of us have fools Mm -hmm. in our lives that we have to deal with. And then we have to look to the future. And I think uh, so many times we get 
busy about focusing on other people. I have, again, 10 kids and I hear more about she's doing this and she's doing that. And <laughs> well, what did you do in that situation? Well, I just said, and it's like they, they minimize what they're doing because they're mm-hmm. focused on what other people are doing. But really when we uh, focus on ourselves, when we take these to heart, when we look at our lives and say like, how does this apply to me currently? Yeah. Then I think it's so much, um, that's how we gain wisdom. When we look at ourselves, when we figure out, cause we can't change other people, but we, when we figure out what we need to change, what we need to do, then that makes, uh, makes us willing to follow God in his ways, um, instead of just pointing fingers. It's so true. So true. And what we are seeing, what we are really seeing in these 30 wise sayings is the fact of this is taking the law and the covenant and all that we learned about what God requires of us and actually living that out mm-hmm. and and living that out with with in our relationship with him, but also living it out in the world. And um, so the 30 wise sayings were kind of fun to go through. They hey, were. We- we have we need to take a break here. When we come back, we'll have the word of the day. Stay tuned. Hey friends, we're excited to invite you on a new adventure with us to dig deeper into God's word. We've created a coffee club for the Daily Bible Podcast listeners over at Substack. It's called the Daily Bible Pod Coffee Club. Get it? daily Bible pod. We have some (laughs) challenges, extra accountability, our journal prompt, and other things to help you think through what you've just read. Basically a cozy blend of faith, community, coffee, and Bible reading. We have a link to our daily Bible pod coffee club inside our Facebook page, or simply go to daily Bible pod coffee club.substack.com. Can't wait to see you there. Okay, the word of the day is keep. It's to have or retain possession of, and the cinnamon, synonym, 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 or cinnamon, <laughs> cinnamon. Are you hungry, Michelle? Do you need I, I think cinnamon? I'm hungry, or maybe, you know what? I always put cinnamon in my coffee in the morning. What? And, and so that's probably what I'm smelling is coffee and cinnamon. But anyway, so the synonym is to stay or remain. The synonym for keep is to stay or remain. And so just think about what Solomon is teaching us here in these wise sayings. He's wanting us to stay. He's wanting us to remain. He's wanting us to to keep God's words. And Solomon is asking us to keep these sayings in our hearts, to keep our hearts on the right course. Mm -hmm. And we see the word keep throughout the Bible. There's so many instances that involve a shepherd keeping his sheep. And we see a shepherd treating their sheep like a treasure, like a prize, because it's their livelihood. It's it's for them and it's for their family. It's for food. It's for selling. It's for it's 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 for everything for them. Mm -hmm. And so we see them treating the shepherd like a we, we see the shepherds treating their sheep like a, tr- like a treasure, like a prize. And Solomon is saying that we need to keep our hearts. And I can't help but think that it's a similar feeling here. He wants us to keep our hearts mm-hmm. like a treasure, like yeah. a prize to say our hearts are sacred for God. Like that's where our hearts need to be. And so he's wanting us to preserve our hearts, to continue walking forward, to continue walking forward and see God at the end. And, and of course, we know now what Solomon did in that in to keep looking towards the cross. And and just think about, as I was thinking about keep, and as I was thinking about Solomon's words for us, I kept thinking about what God keeps for us. Mm -hmm. Like, think about that in 1 Peter 1, 4, there's an inheritance that is waiting for us in heaven. And And then remember David's words back in Psalm 56, God keeps track of our sorrows and our tears. Like, there's so many things that that he keeps for us and he keeps his promises mm-hmm. he his covenant with his people from Deuteronomy 6 he, in Deuteronomy 6 we see understand therefore that the Lord your God is indeed God he is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and I don't know if we've gone through a thousand generations yet I don't know that we have I don't think so <laughs> so just think about that he's yeah. keeping his covenant 
for a thousand generation. God keeps a lot. And Solomon is asking for us to keep our heart. That's all he's saying is just keep your heart next to God. Just keep it on the straight and narrow because God has already kept so much for us. Oh, I love that so much. And I love that, that God, is, I mean, he is so faithful. He does keep his promises. And the first scripture that came to mind when I saw the word keep is this, and mm-hmm. it's Isaiah 26, three through four. And it says, you will keep in perfect peace Ooh. all who trust in you, mm-hmm. all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Trust in the Lord always for the yeah. Lord God is the eternal rock. And listen how well this connects with the Proverbs. So as I kept, I got into Isaiah 26 and I kept reading. So then we move into verse five. It says, he humbles the proud and brings down the arrogant city. He brings it down to dust. The poor and the oppressed trample it underfoot and the needy walk all over it. But for those who are righteous, the way is not steep and rough. And so this is what we're talking about. You know, we're talking about the humble, the proud, um, the poor, and then those who, you know, those who are righteous, it's not going to be hard. I love that. The way is not steep and rough. God Mm -hmm. makes a good path for us. And so, you know, Mm -hmm. trust in the Lord with all your heart in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And so I love how you immediately thought of those scriptures um, in first Peter and in Psalms and then in Deuteronomy. And I'm like, Ooh, and then there's the scripture in Isaiah and all these themes again are coming together. And we see that these bigger themes in the scripture are just wrapped up in these very little phrases. Um, And I love how he says like, remember these, these 30 wise sayings. And when we know the things that we are supposed to be saying, then it, it like it, those, that's what comes to mind. And so um, what, one thing that I learned when we were uh, dealing with kids for, in foster care with anger, instead of just saying like, uh, stop doing that, don't do that, like if they're angry, say, um, you are angry. Do you want to tell me about it? And directing, like you're acknowledging first that they're angry mm. and then you're asking them to communicate instead of just saying, what's wrong or stop doing that or whatever. You're not acknowledging it. And so once you, once you have the information and once you know what to say and that thought is in your mind now, I know to use that phrase. And so it made me think of these wise sayings as people, of course, the students were memorizing it. The people of Israel knew these sayings. And so when they were in a situation and someone's like, Hey, you want to lend me some money? And that, that saying is going to go through in their mind. They're like, "Mm, no, I'm not going to, be able to lend you money now or something like that. It just gave them the tools to use for these situations when they were able to understand and know and memorize these wise sayings. So true. And when we do put things to memory like that, then that is a knee jerk reaction. When we, when Mm -hmm. things happen or when things we're having a conversation or something, all those things will come to mind because that is what God does when we are memorizing or meditating on his word. He brings those things back, back around. So that is what comes out first. And, um, and so, so that is, that is just so true. So true. Yeah. I love that. And I love that God is just keeping so much for us. Like you were talking about, he's taking care of us. So why wouldn't we want to love him and serve him and and choose the right path? Because once we know these things and we know he's keeping all these things for us, then we want to do the right thing. We want to do the right thing. And yet in so many instances, I find myself not keeping, like not Mm -hmm. keeping my heart where it should be not being as vigilant as I should be. And I keep going, what is the secret sauce? And I know the secret sauce is just keeping him in the forefront of my brain, tattooing him on my eyelids so that whenever I close my eyes, that's what I see. But for some reason, I just keep, and I know it's it's just the human condition and I need to make it just a knee-jerk reaction of always meditating and ruminating on God and only God. But yet my heart right now is just faltering. (laughs) Yeah. And so it's all of us. It's all of us. I know. Trisha, would you, would you pray for us today? Mm -hmm. Oh, dear heavenly father. I just thank you. First of all, that you have uh, given us wise sayings that you have instructed people through your Holy Spirit to write, uh, write down these for us that we can learn more about you. And I thank you that uh, you tell us to keep these things in our mind, in our hearts, so that we may follow you. 
And I thank you that, Lord, you always keep your promises. You say, you know, the righteous will have an easier path and do, do the right thing. But we are doing that knowing that you are taking care of us. You are there. You are walking with us. You are guiding us and you have good plans for us. So thank you for all the ways that you keep us and that you keep our minds steady and fixed on you, Lord. And I pray that as we continue on our walk, that all these all these lessons that we're learning as we read through your word, they will just come to mind and they will be our go-to. They will be our go-to mm. thoughts, our go-to to reactions, our go-to actions as we walk this walk of faith. And just be with us today and may you be glorified by our lives. In your name we, in your name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can also find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. And tomorrow we are reading the entire book of the Song of Songs. So we are reading chapters one through eight. Song of Songs. Woo-hoo. It'll be fun. Tomorrow's It'll discussion be fun. will be good. Yeah. <laughs> will be really good. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.